Uh, let me first uh, sort of wrap up this past week's game, then we'll move forward talking about uh, the game versus Tulane this week. Really proud of our football team, uh, especially just for the fact of how they've responded in the last two weeks, especially defensively. Uh, for a second straight week, we've not allowed a team to rush for over 100 yards. That's two in a row under 100. Uh, and we continue to improve. Still getting better, but you can you can see tangible uh, improvement uh, areas throughout the defense. And uh, we've we've got some guys that are that are playing really hard for us, and that's the exciting part. Uh, the linebackers are way more active in, in what we're doing right now, and I think you saw that with Otha Peters and Tremaine Lightfoot with ten and nine tackles respectively. Uh, we continue to keep the balls in front of us. Uh, and we're doing a good job of, of getting a lot of people to the football. So I thought that was uh, just another step in the right direction as we continue uh, making progress defensively. Offensively, I thought uh, by far our best output of the season. I thought our second half was, uh, was really good. I thought we sort of – I thought George took the reins off a little bit and uh, we opened it up a little bit. Had some things set up that we had called in the first half uh, and that, that helped. And so in the second half, we really hit some big plays. Did a good job of getting Elijah the football. Uh, even had a couple more shots that went his way. Uh, the one wheel route in the end zone that he almost brought down. So he did a good job of giving him opportunities to catch the ball. And then, you know, he rewarded him with 220-some-odd uh, yards rushing, uh, which was a phenomenal night by him. Offensive line continues to uh, just show improvement. Those guys are getting better each, each week. Not only have they been strong in the run game, I, I thought they pass protected pretty solid. Uh, for the most part throughout the game, gave um, Anthony quality time. And uh, other than two, two, two mistakes, I thought he continued to play really well through some really accurate passes. And um, he, he's just, each week we're seeing the same guy that prepares every week, so that's been a big plus. A lot of, lot of wide receivers got involved this week. Mike Jacquette ran a great, great route, got his first touchdown as a raging Cajun. Kenan Barnes. Uh, there's two young kids right there scoring touchdowns for us. And then Al Rouse had, had his career best game, to say the least. Uh, had some big plays. And some of our long pass plays weren't long passes. They were plays that our wide receivers turned into long plays. And that was, that was what I love seeing is guys taking the mid-range passes and, and taking them the distance, making people miss. That was, uh, man, that was exciting to see. Uh, so, but Al's biggest play of the game to me came at the end of the game when uh, Anthony threw him on the seam, got behind him, and that really sort of put the fork in the game there where we could run out the clock, got us out, out of the hole, back up. And that was a, that was a veteran, veteran uh, throw and catch in that situation. Uh, and so I'm just uh, proud of the way they responded and uh, just overall I thought our offense really clicked in the second half. We played with good tempo. We gave them lots of formations, and I thought we, 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 we showed improvement there. Kicking game, not, not as much, uh, although, you know, Stevie didn't have his best, best night, but, but also what you probably did notice is Stevie's kickoffs were the best he'd had this year. He had, I think he had five kickoffs. All were either in the end zone or on the goal line, exactly on the numbers, and that's where we want the ball. And so, like I told him, his night was not all lost because he did an excellent job with the directions of our kicks, which is sometimes difficult. Steven Coots had a really good night again. He downed the ball at the five he, on a pooch punt that we downed on the five. And then at the end of the game, backed up with four minutes left in our own end zone. His foot was on the back of the, back of the goal line, uh, back of the end zone. And he gets a great punt off, 45-yard punt. And they have to fair catch it at the 50 with no return. So I, and the protection was really good. So I thought he did a really nice job there. And so we've got to clean up our field goals and extra points. Can't let that come back and, um, and bite us uh, in the future. So we'll work on that this week. There's a lot of things other than that that we still got to work on. A lot of mistakes that we continue, to, you know, that we've got to improve upon. But still, I still see improvement. And I, but a thing that I notice is our kids are playing hard. That's what excites me um, with that. But one of the biggest areas of improvement, I, I for failed to mention was penalty wise we talked about last week wanting to address the penalty issue four penalties 30 yards uh much improved there much improvement there and so um i was proud of the way our guys responded with that challenge and it paid off uh in a big way and we weren't near as behind the sticks as we had been previously in other games with those type of penalties and so that that helped tremendously so 
Well, that being said, moving forward now uh, to Tulane, big in-game, in-state uh, rival game. Anytime we play an in-state opponent, for us, it's a, a rival game. Uh, it'll be a, a, a packed house there at Tulane Stadium. Uh, it'll be a great crowd. I expect our fans to travel extremely well. Um, and so it should be a great environment. Uh, Coach Fritz has already got their team off playing awfully well. They uh, had a chance to beat Wake Forest, uh, had a chance to beat Navy. They could be 3-0 and just as easily as they are right now, 1-2. and Don't let the record fool you. They are a very, very good defensive football team uh, when you watch them play, to say the least. Offensively, they, uh, they run the option. Same thing he did at Georgia Southern, which causes lots of uh, – Problems that you have to prepare for, lots of challenges, and they've got a very young, talented, athletic quarterback uh, that can can escape, can run, can throw. He's going to be a really good player, and uh, you can see uh, why he's the starter. So they've got a good football team, and um, it will be an exciting game. Our kids are excited about the opportunity to go to New Orleans. We love making that trip, and our fans love making that trip, and I really think we'll have a great showing, a great turnout of fans as uh, we get ready to play a, a, a big game this, this Saturday. So with that, any questions? When, when you face a spread triple option game like Fritz likes to run, what are some of the issues defensively that you deal with during the week, whether that be schematics or just kind of what your assignments are? Yeah, some of, some of the things you can't simulate. But, um, you know, we, we run a little bit of read option, so we'll be able to give them some good looks. We'll go against ourselves a little bit this week because we like to run some read option, and we've, we've done some of the things similar to what they do. Uh, it's not an under center triple option like a Navy or an Air Force, but it's still uh, a, a really good system that puts a lot of pressure on you. Uh, and you've got to have somebody for the dive, somebody for the quarterback. They try to stretch the field, and that quarterback's athletic enough to make somebody miss. Uh, and they've got some, some really good running backs. They've got two big tackles that, uh, that we know well that we recruited, and I think they're really good. Uh, so I, I think they're good up front on the offensive line. And uh, so. Uh, it'll be a challenge. What is it that they do defensively that makes them good? Well, one is uh, they put a lot of people close to the ball. Their safeties are walked down. They're about eight, eight or nine yards sitting right on top, and they fit the run really good. So they get the safeties involved in the run game really quickly. They're not back there deep on the hash. Uh, they're they're deep linebackers if you if you sort of watch them on tape. So they got a lot of guys around the ball. Uh, Marley, we played against him in the bowl game a few years ago. He's been there a long time. He's that wiry old veteran that uh, just makes plays. And, uh, you know, he's been around a long time. And so uh, he's a really good player. And they've got good corners uh, on the edge. And they can cover you down in man coverage and put a lot of people in the box. And uh, I think their front is active too. So I, I think they're in, uh, they like getting five guys on the line of scrimmage, almost like a double legal look. Um, to, to put a lot of pressure on you there. So they're, they're, they're a really good defense football team. You said your linebackers have been more involved in the game. Nothing like the little time the defense gets an option attack. Well, yeah, you know, you always got to play that, that type of game when you play an option football team. And, but uh, I think our linebackers are really liking this four-man front because obviously now they no, don't have guards right there in their face like you do against an odd, or, or an odd front. And so they're allowing those guys to make more plays and um, it's been productive for us so far. We've got to continue to improve. Well, your linebackers through the secondary, uh, Tulane only had two looking in that movie after pass last night. How confident are you in your secondary to kind of? Well, the thing, what they're going to do, though, you know, they, they're going to run the ball, run the ball, and if you're not careful, they're going to lull you to sleep, and they're going to hit a play action pass and get right behind you. And so, uh, you know, they didn't throw it a lot last year at Georgia Southern either, and they led the nation's probably in total offense rush for 400 yards a game. Uh, they know how to run the football. I can promise you that. And uh, as this quarterback gets more experience and you know, every game, he, he's going to be a dangerous kid. The kid can run, can throw. He's young. But uh, young kids play with a lot of enthusiasm, too. And so uh, we cannot let the play action uh, get behind us because they're, they're really good at running the ball. And to stop the run, you got to get people around the, around the box. If you sit back in coverage, they're going to go up and down the field on you. If you get in there to stop the run, you got to be careful because they're going to slip somebody past you on the play action. Talk a little bit about Elijah's impact in addition to his rushing. I know first touchdown, he made a key block in pass protection. In the second one, he was the pump guy 
Yep. Well, you know, that guy, uh, we, we talked about it in our meeting. You know, he, he does everything except tape the ankles and drive the bus. And, you know, for him to step up in protection like that, give our quarterback time, and then, then we use him as a decoy on the, on the bubble. And, uh, you know, that guy can help you in more ways than just with the ball in his hand. So he just had a phenomenal night. And uh, I think I saw right now he's one of only seven, four, four kids in the country with, with 5,000 all-purpose yards. And so um, he, he's doing well. And nothing to our running backs, third straight game. We, you know, we had two interceptions this past week, but we still have not put the ball on the ground. Uh, they're doing a great job of taking care of the ball. Phenomenal. And that's been a huge plus. What's that? Place kicking job is uh, under evaluation. That'd be the best thing. I don't know if I'd say open yet. I'm not going to bench anybody just because of their first or, or, or just for one bad game. But we're going to – other guys are going to get some opportunities this week more than they've gotten in the past. Um, the competition is going to step up. And uh, Dylan Schertz came in and did a nice job, nailed his extra point. Um, Stevie did get the field goal, but we, he's got to get his confidence back a little bit. And uh, we got to give him some an opportunity this week to improve. He, like I said, his kickoffs are really good, but we've got to have more consistency, uh, especially uh, f our goal is this, make 100% of all PATs and make every field goal 42 yards and in. Anything past that, uh, I'm good with. But 42 and in, we want to be, we want to be just about dead on. And obviously, we definitely want to be on for extra points. But he'll improve. He's a hard worker. Very hard worker. It means a lot to him, um, and we've got he's got a strong leg. So hopefully this week we can we can uh, clean up some things he's doing fundamentally, and uh, and get him ready to go. But the other guys will get some looks this week uh, more than in the past. Yeah, we've looked at it. We've looked at it. Uh, a couple of, of the other holders may get a little look this week too, and, and see if he maybe works better with another holder. Just so happens, and so we're going to evaluate the whole process. The snaps though have been solid. The snaps have been really good. So it's not the snapper. Um, so we're going to evaluate the holder and the kickers, and uh, get the best ones on the field. And uh, but Stevie, we're going to be given every opportunity to you know to uh, to be the guy. You know, we're still learning, and is the kind of offense you're playing make it a little easier or tougher preparation-wise for a defense that's still kind of in the Oh, much, much tougher, I think, because it's just so much assignment ball, east and west, play action. Um, it, it, it's tough. But, but right now, to be honest with you, it'd be tough for any any team that you're playing, whatever, regardless of the scheme, just because you're so new in the system. So if you're play, playing a five-wide, empty team every snap, that would create – challenges too. You just don't see that I football team no more where it's tall sweep right, tall sweep left, belly dive up the middle. You know, we just don't get to prepare for that anymore. It's it's one extreme or the other. It's empty, throw it all around the park. It's option football one week. It's spread, tempo. It's it's the flavor of the of the week, you know, it seems to be. And so our our, our guys have to learn on the run. Uh, they don't get to have five weeks of camp going against us and and working out all the little kinks that you have throughout camp. and But the, the best thing I think we have, though, I think I really feel like our coaches have our players in the best positions. And that's been the most critical thing is they, they're able to make plays. They're running to the ball. We've kept it simple enough where our guys can run to the ball, not have to think a lot. And um, and we, we got some balls out. You know, we had the uh, one recovery. Uh, but we had three more balls. One ball should have been our ball. The first play of the third quarter, the ball came out. Officials didn't see it, missed it. Uh, that should have been first and ten Cajuns going in on the first play of the third quarter. So uh, we had a lot of strips, a lot of balls that we got out. That was really encouraging. Otha Peters on the sack from behind popped the ball out, and they fell on it over there on the numbers. And so, man, we're getting balls out. That's the exciting part. And the main thing is they're tackling hard, playing physical, and that's that's causing that. Right. As of now, no. As of now, no.
getting these guys yeah. in the rhythm of the game? You know, we got we got probably our two deep. It's almost to the point where we don't even know who's in, don't even care. Our, our two deep are, are rolling pretty good. Now, we didn't pl- we didn't substitute as well as, as we would have liked this week. Kenan Barnes and Marcus Bradley went way too many snaps. Gabe uh, should have got more snaps this week. He'll get more snaps next week. Sometimes uh, coaches just in the heat of the moment, uh, you just – trying to get them in, but you want to play with tempo. So if you substitute, they're going to stop the game, give everybody a chance to get lined up. And so we got our tempo going in the second half, and we just didn't want to substitute. But we've, we've got to get those guys in when there is a dead ball uh, because those guys are good players too. So uh, we, we want to substitute a little bit more than what we did this past week. It's not a concern if you score. Okay, it is if you don't <laughs> put it that way. Uh, talking about tempo, if you if you have a short drive and don't last very long, if you score, boy, I'm all for it. You go three and out, put it back in the hands of the defense, then obviously those things are are concerned. So, um, if we can continue finding ways to score quickly, I have no problem with that too. And then if there's parts of the game like it toward the end where we we uh, milked the clock and held the clock, went to a four minute offense and. Then we're able to do that also. But the tempo part really helped us in the second half create some of those big plays. And uh, it seemed to be working working pretty good for us there. I hope we can build build on that. I was going to ask, you know, you've had around 60-ish plays for the first three games. You always talk you want to get to 80 or 90. What needs to happen to close that gap? Or is it just a case of if, if you don't get there, you don't get there? Well, you know, one thing is defensively, uh, teams have drove the ball a little bit, and they've kept the ball. They've kept the ball away from us a little bit. Uh, they hadn't necessarily scored a lot of points in the last two games, but they've had some drives. They've converted some first downs uh, and kept the ball a little bit. They they had the, they won the turnover battle by a pretty good margin. This, not, not turnover battle, time of possession battle this past week by a pretty good margin. And so a little bit of that's cutting into the amount of, of offensive possessions or offensive plays that we get to. Um, but some of the plays, you know, we scored quickly there in the second half and didn't have very long drives. He had a different gear, didn't he? he? He had a different gear this past week. That was great to see. I uh, really hope we can build on that. And um, that was, that was, I was fired up for him. Same, same each week. You know, I think he had three catches this week. You know, we didn't, we didn't have, we didn't, he didn't have uh, necessarily a lot of yards, but the ball found him a few times, which is good. And uh, but in our system, you know, it's a the tight ends are going to catch the ball in play action probably a little bit more than the other, other routes. But um, um, he, he's he's playing really good right now. Matt Barnes though came in and really played well too. He he gave us some really good minutes, so we're excited about that. David, you've been trying for 30 minutes, man. You've got, to, you've got to work on your reaction time a little bit. There we go. Uh, what was the thought process of going with two on 511? Yeah, well, the thought process, I must have put the wrong GA in charge of our two-point chart. This is how that went down. When you score on the field and you're watching pro games and college games, when you score, you don't have to sit there and figure up, okay, we're up by 8, 9, 10, 11. You just have a chart. And the coach in the box, we have a coach in the box uh, that's got the chart. And so he he says, Coach, go for one. Coach, go for two. Now, if it's first half, we're just about always going to go for one if it's early in the game. But when it gets into part of the game where you may want to go for two, you go to the chart. And so he said, hey, Coach, go for two. Go for two. And I've got the same chart on my play sheet that I have carrying with me, and other coaches have the same chart. And so on the chart, it's got a head by one, head by two, head by three, all the way to 30. Behind by one, all the way to 30, it tells you, go for one or go for two. Well, on this chart, it said, go for two. So he just read it off. And so when I, when I did two, I sent them all out. And as they're getting lined up to go for two, I'm starting calculating in my head. I said, go for two, 11, 12. I said, that, that really don't sound right. So I pulled up my sheet and looked at it because I was, thought he may have gave me the wrong deal. So I looked at my two-point chart. Sure enough, uh, up by 11, it says, go for two. I'm like, well, damn, is that right? I might need to edit that. So, but, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, that, that's sort, sort of how that went down. And then it was too late. Uh, we ran two, went for two and didn't make it. And so I went back. As soon as I got in the uh, office that night, I pulled up 
last year's game plan sheets. We keep everything from the year before. We put it in a binder. Your offensive game plan, defense game plan, special teams game plan. Pulled it out. I looked at the chart. See what you do on plus uh, up 11. Uh, it said kick the extra point. And so the graduate assistant that's in charge of formulating my sheets each week, I don't know where he found this two-point chart, but it is not the two-point chart we've used for the last five years. And so needless to say, we had a little conversation about the, uh, the two-point chart that was used. And so luckily, it didn't come back to bite us, but boy, you know, it, it, it certainly can. So those are those things. It's just so many. You've got to make sure that you double check the double checkers uh, sometimes. But uh, nevertheless, that's sort of how that went down. It was a crazy story. But um, needless to say, we'll have the, the new chart, the ones we've already checked and tried and true. I just thought they'd, they were supposed to use it, the same one, this year. And somehow they, they put another one on, on our sheets. So. Got a new GA in charge of that responsibility. Yeah, that has been changed to somebody else. That is the, for coaches, sure. I know coaches don't typically like to go out of conference as soon as you get into conference, but does it help that you have an, an in-state rival? You know, there's a little juice to this game to where there's it's not really stepping outside of conference. You know, you know, yeah, this 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 will add a lot of you know playing Tulane add a lot of juice. In-state opponent. Um, you know, we've already played these guys twice in, in really good games, big crowds. Our, our, our kids will be excited to play this game. They'll know everybody on their team. They'll know everybody on our team. Uh, that'll make it fun. It'll make it interesting. Both fan bases will get after it. it I, I anticipate it being sold out. And so that's going. that stadium's right on top of you. They're right on top of you, so it should be loud. It should be an exciting atmosphere. And uh, so we, we need a great week of practice. Yeah, I'm hey, pretty excited about that. Um, um, you know, we're always looking to play great opponents, but the thing I'm most excited about is um, we get to play a, it's sort of a home and home, and that's what we were looking for is a home and home, uh, and our home game will be in the Superdome. And I think, you know, to start the season, uh, a great sort of like, a, it's almost to me like a kickoff game, like you see early in the year, some of the kickoff games playing in, in uh, neutral, neutral sites. Uh, so we're playing in, uh, in the Superdome to kick the season off. Um, I, I expect our fans, they will love that trip, obviously, and um, it'll create a lot of excitement. Um, and so we're looking, looking forward to that. You know, it's way down the road, but uh, I think that was a, a, good, uh, a good solid um, a deal for, for, for our fans and, and our team to get a home and home with, with Mississippi State. Coach, where are you in the short yardage? Is, it hasn't kind of worked out for you. And yeah, it hasn't, hasn't. Has it. Well, you know, the thing is, you know, he tripped and he didn't – and two things. One, he, he tripped and didn't didn't get a good push like he normally would. Two, we got a bad spot. Uh, if I would have seen the spot in person and could, could really tell, I would have challenged the spot instead of the pass. I could have sworn from my vantage point that the dude dropped the ball, Gerald Everett, and Gerald after the game come up to me and said, Coach, man, I tried to tell you I didn't drop that ball because he looked over at me <laughs> when I challenged it. Gerald did say, Coach, man, I caught that ball. And so, but nevertheless, um, uh, we got a bad spot too. And then, um, um, but we've got to reevaluate that. It's just, you know, he's really good, he's strong, but it is, is it, you know, we've got to have something else off of that or we've got to uh, go with another plan. You know what I'm saying? Just can't do that every time. But, you know, in the past, there's been people that known it was coming and couldn't, couldn't stop it, but we're 0 for 2 on it the last two times. And, you know, if you think about points we left on the board this past game, two extra points, a short missed field goal, that's five. We went for two instead of one, that's six. And then uh, we're on the 10-yard line, that's 16 points, really, uh, we felt like that we left on the field uh, that really could have changed the game. Um, so we, we've got to do a better job there. So that, that part is, is being evaluated for sure. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch. See you all in New Orleans. Thanks.